Mute yourselves, everybody. So, third topic is uh, perfect completion. So, perfect completion is one kind of market. Uh, there are several other uh, types of market. Uh, which I'll uh, we will talk in your fourth semester, but uh, in this semester you have only this perfect competitive market, this uh, in your syllabus. So first thing is what is market? So by market in terms of economics, we do not uh, market is not a particular place, or it, uh, but it is an institution where buyers and sellers exchange goods and services so perfect competition is basically one kind of market structure uh, so to know the perfect competitive what is that structure of the market uh, we need to know the assumptions of a perfectly competitive market so the first assumption is that uh, there exists large number of buyers and sellers in the industry that means uh, the number of buyers and sellers are huge so that each buyer or each seller is an infinitesimally small in comparison to the market demand or market supply. So one single buyer or one single seller uh, does not have any impact on the market price. So if one particular buyer changes his or her demand, uh, all of a sudden, say he started demanding double or triple, or if one particular seller started to produce triple or four times, that does not make any impact on the market price. It's something like that. Uh, if you take uh, one bucket of water from an ocean, so it doesn't change the volume of water in that uh, ocean noticeably. So each and every firm uh, does not have any impact on the market price. So all of them are known as price taker or they take the market price, which is determined by the demand and sub market demand and market supply curve. So for each buyer and each seller, the market price is given. So they take that mar market price as given and whatever they want to demand at that price they will get it or whatever they want to sell whatever amount they amount or they want to sell at that given price they can sell so each firm can sell uh, any amount of output it wants at the market determined price is this clear the first uh, assumption yes sir so it's uh, something like that, uh, say, if you travel in a local train or bus, you see a lot of vendors uh, sell, say, peanuts, uh, say, of 5 rupees or 10 rupees a pack. So you know, there is no difference, uh, virtually no difference between uh, if you purchase it from vendor A1 or vendor 2, it doesn't make any change. So there are uh, thousands and thousands of vendors who sell this kind of thing so one particular buyer or one particular seller does not have any impact on the market price next assumption is there is free entry and free exit of the firm so there is no economic or legal restrictions for entry or exit uh, from the industry if the existing firm in the industry make super normal profit, new firms will enter into the industry. And if firms make loss, some firm will exit from the industry. It's something like that. Uh, if you uh, see that, uh, say, your neighbors are into some business and they are making some profit out of that business, so that allures you to join that industry. So you, you may think that if I join that industry, I can also make some profit, uh, so I'll join. So there is no restriction 
no governing restriction or no legal restriction or no economic restriction. So whoever wants to join the industry, whenever they want to join, they can join. And if some firms are losing into the industry, they can move out, they can shut down their operation and move out at any time, uh, whenever they want. And in long run, there is unrestricted mobility of inputs. Inputs means uh, labor and capital that can move uh, freely in long run. Fine. Sir, it to RX but it to repeat code means that margin for that break or something. Sir, I'm saying that there is free entry and exit. There is free entry and exit. Mute yourself. So, Jodi Kono Farm, Jodi, someone who is uh, still not joined into the industry, and see, he is seeing that uh, those who are in the industry, they are making profit. So, you will uh, join this industry in the anticipation of making some profit from producing in that industry. Similarly, if, uh, you, if, if, if the, some of the farms are making loss uh, in the production or in the business, so they will, they can move or they can shut down their operation whenever they want. So there is a free entry and free exit of the farms. So whenever they want, they can join whenever they want, they can leave. Okay. Yes, sir. Next is all the firms in the industry are producing homogeneous or identical products. That means, as I said in the previous example of uh, the peanut vendors. So uh, if you purchase it from vendor one, or if you purchase it from vendor two, it doesn't make any change of your peanuts. The quality and quantity of your peanuts are exactly the same. So these products are perfect substitute to each other. So there is no difference in quality, quantity, etc., uh, between uh, the product, products of different farms. So no buyer has any brand preference. That means uh, buyer has does not have any choice whether they can buy from uh, farm one or they can buy from farm two so buyer knows that the product products of farm a or farm uh, b is uh, exactly the same so there is no brand preference uh, or brand loyalty uh, toward any particular uh, farm so if sellers know that, that there is no brand preference of the consumer, so no seller will spend uh, money on advertisement. Clear? So there is no advertisement also. And the products are homogeneous or identical to each other. Fourth assumption, all the buyers and sellers have perfect information regarding price, quality of the output produce, and production function, cost function, etc. So this is called perfect information. So all the buyers and sellers know about everything. And we also assume that transaction cost is zero. Trans transportation cost is also zero. Transportation cost means cost of uh, transporting the products from say, uh, one point, one place to another place. So we assume that uh, transportation cost is zero here and transaction cost, uh, transaction cost means the cost to make a deal between the buyer and seller. So that uh, transaction cost is also zero here. Fine. So with these assumptions, we will uh, see the uh, different marginal revenue, average revenue curves and we'll look at the equilibrium. So a farm, any farm uh, 
in a market will try to produce that much output that will give him or her maximum profit. So that is the sole motto of a firm in any industry to maximize uh, its profit. Okay. Now look at uh, first look at the total revenue and average revenue and marginal revenue curves. So what is total revenue? Total revenue is the firm's value of sales of output is called total revenue. Say, for example, say if you, uh, if the market price, the market price is determined by the demand function or market demand and the market supply. So this is the market price P and this is the market output Q. So this is how the market price will be determined. And now this price, as this price P, this can be 10 rupees or this can be 100 rupees, whatever. So now this price is, take, is taken as given by all the buyers and all the, all the sellers. Now I'm asking you that if for a particular farm, farm one, if the farm produces, say, uh, 50 unit of the commodity and if the price of each unit is 100 un rupees per unit then what is the firm's total revenue total revenue will be is output q multiplied by the market price 5000 so, so this this is the total revenue of the firm fine Is this okay? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, what will be the average revenue? Average revenue means revenue per unit of output, or you can write it P times Q divided by Q. That will be price. Clear? So average revenue is also equal to the price. Average revenue means revenue of the firm per unit of its output or per unit of production. Now what about the marginal revenue? Marginal revenue means change in total revenue for one unit change in output. Okay. So if you take this P times Q change in total revenue divided by change in Q as P is constant P come out. So Delta Q by delta q so that will be equal to price so price is equal to average revenue equal to marginal revenue also you can think of marginal revenue like this say if the firm uh, already sold say price is equal to five rupees say if the firm already sold say uh, nine units so total revenue from nine unit is will be how much 45 right if the farm produces if the farm produces nine unit and which will be sold at five rupees a piece then total revenue from nine units will be 45 rupees yes sir. now if the farm increase its output by one unit then total what will be the total revenue from 10 unit will be 50 yes sir so what is the difference difference is called marginal revenue so that will be 5 
or this will be equal to nothing but your price. ठीक है Yes. 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 So as price is unchanged, so say for the first unit, if if output equal say if Q equal to one, then what will be your total revenue? Total revenue कतो होगा? Sir fifty. Price is five. सर फाइव हो बेटा ले सो टोटल रेवेन्यू फाइव बट इफ क्यू इक्वल टू टू टेन इट विल बी टेन बट इफ क्यू इक्वल टू थ्री फिफ्टीन 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 बट इफ क्यू इक्वल टू फाइव फोर ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी सो व्हाट इज़ द डिफरेंस बिटवीन Q equal to one and Q equal to two. Five. Five. What is the difference in these two? Q equal to two and Q equal to three. Five. Five. What is the difference here? Five. 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 So everywhere, uh, the marginal revenue, MR, is equal to five. 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 Okay. So marginal revenue is nothing but the price here. Okay. Okay. Similarly, from this, so this twenty is for TR for output is equal to four. So what is your average revenue? Twenty divided by four unit of output Q equal to four. So that will be five. so we can see from this is price equal to average revenue equal to marginal revenue so this is an important formula in case of perfect competition sir sir average revenue ka sir kya formula tha sir yahan pe likha hai total revenue divided by output which will be equal to price okay Okay, sir. So total revenue is equal to P times Q, where P is fixed, which is market price, and Q is the amount of output sold. So average revenue is equal to P. Marginal revenue is also P. So for in perfect competition, price is equal to AR equal to marginal revenue MR. So as P price is fixed, so ever so we can think draw a horizontal straight line. This straight line, P equal to MR equal to uh, AR. So this price is constant. So uh, this line will be a horizontal straight line. So for any price, so if you draw a straight line here, horizontal straight line. so this is your price equal to ar equal to mr so for any amount of output if you produce here or if you produce here or if you produce here you will get the same price p okay so this is your price equal to average revenue equal to marginal revenue and this curve is the demand curve of the for one particular farm so the demand curve faced by the farm in the competitive industry is horizontal and it is perfectly elastic this straight line so at price p a farm can sell any amount of output and by selling x one unit extra amount of output the farm will get the extra revenue which will be equal to its price which is p so price is equal to average revenue equal to marginal revenue and t total revenue curve will be positively sloped straight line passing through origin like this total revenue curve why total revenue curve will be upward sloping straight line 
Can anyone tell me? Question to Aragbar Bolan. Upward sloping straight line can you have a total revenue card? Ta? How this TR card will look like? The price is fixed. Price is fixed. Multiplied by output. So as output increases, TR will also increase. So P is constant. So total revenue card will look like a straight line passing through origin like this. It's yeah. something like Y equal to MX, this type of equation. So it will equation of a straight line passing through origin. There is no horizontal intercept or no vertical intercept. So depending on the value of M, the slope of total revenue curve can change. Yes. Okay. Next comes to profit. So what is profit in economics? In case of uh, accounts and accountancy, we know that profit is equal to profit will be equal to total revenue minus total cost. This is the definition of profit. What is your uh, total revenue or what is the amount of earning from the sale of the commodities? And what is the uh, your total cost uh, to produce the output? So this is the accounting definition of profit. But in economics, we did that apart also. Economic profit is equal to accounting profit minus the opportunity cost of resources. So which will be equal to total revenue minus total cost. That is your accounting profit minus the normal profit. What is normal profit? Say, for example, say to start a business, say you need 100 rupees. And investing this 100 rupees, uh, if you are investing in some plant, say you got your total revenue, say is equal to say 60 and your total cost is say 20. So accounting profit will be how much? 40. 40. Okay. Now what I'm saying that instead of investing this 100 rupees in a farm, you can keep this 100 rupees in a bank as a fixed deposit at and after one year, you will get a fixed return of say uh, 10 rupees. So even if you do not invest this 100 rupees in the farm, you would have earned this 10 rupees by just keeping this 100 rupee as a, a fixed deposit in a bank. So this 10 rupees is, is the opportunity cost of investing this 100 rupee in the plant. So to get economic profit or pi, we call it this uh, sign as pi or economic profit will be equal to this 40 accounting profit minus the opportunity cost 10. So economic profit will be 30. 30. So is it clear? Yes, sir. So there is a difference. The economic between... profit. Uh, where would it yes, sir. Economic profit is the accounting profit minus the opportunity cost of your factors. So to produce some commodities or some service, you need some factors of production like labor production, capital, etc., entrepreneurship, land, etc. So 
I'm taking one example, say 100 rupees is a to produce something, even if you the invest startup capital is 100 rupees. So instead of investing this 100 rupees, if you just keep it as a fixed deposit in a bank, say after one year, you could have get 10 rupees as a rate of interest, as an interest from the, your fixed deposit. So if you deduct this 10 rupees from the accounting profit, what remains is called economic profit. Clear? Okay. So this 10 rupees is your opportunity cost of uh, capital here. Okay. An opportunity cost is something that uh, you are attending my lecture. So instead of attending my lecture, you could have uh, do something else. You could have watched a, a movie using your data of your mobile phone and your time. So that uh, will give you some amount of satisfaction. Say that satisfaction is uh, five unit and after doing my lecture, attending my lecture, say if your satisfaction is 10 unit, so your profit will be this 10 minus 5. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So this is how we define opportunity cost. <clears throat> okay, now when this economic profit is economic profit is equal to zero, we call the farms are earning normal profit. Normal profit means farm is getting just the opportunity cost of its inputs. And if the economic profit is positive, we call that the farms are earning super normal profit. That means firm is getting some amount of money above its opportunity cost of production. If economic profit is negative, we call this firm is making loss or negative super normal profit. Fine. Okay. Now let us come to the short run equilibrium of the farm. Now for a farm, farm knows that this is the market price. So this P farm knows that. So now the farm will have to decide how much it will produce to maximize its profit. So that is why we call this uh, equilibrium of the farm. So at this point, the now in short run, uh, farm has to decide how much it will produce uh, so that it can maximize its profit in equilibrium. So that is our purpose of this analysis. So farms will uh, try to maximize uh, profit in equilibrium. So farm will try to produce some amount of output that will give him the maximum profit. So here for simplicity, we assume that opportunity cost is zero. And then profit or economic profit will be equal to total revenue minus total cost, TR minus TC. And
So profit is total revenue minus total cost. So total revenue minus can write so profit equal to tr minus total fixed cost minus total variable cost now farms has to uh, decide how much it will produce so that it can maximize its profit. So for that, we uh, take differentiation of profit function with respect to output. So that will give us change in tier change in total revenue divided by change in output minus change in TFC, total fixed cost, divided by change in output minus change in TVC, total variable cost for unit change in output will be equal to zero. Now, as this is total fixed cost, so total fixed cost means this cost does not change if you change the amount of output. So change in total fixed cost will be zero. So you can say that and this term is nothing but your marginal revenue term. So this is your MR minus this is change in total variable cost or this will be your marginal cost function will be equal to zero or you can write like this MR will be equal to MC. So marginal revenue will be equal to marginal cost at the equilibrium. So whenever there is marginal cost is equal to marginal uh, revenue, then firm will get its equilibrium or at that point of output firm can maximize its profit. Now this is called first order condition. First order condition of maximization, profit maximization. But second order condition requires, say if you take the second derivative, Slope of MR curve delta Q minus change in MC by delta Q will be less than zero. And that will be like that. This is this will be slope of MR, slope of a mute curve must be less than slope of MC curve. That means uh, MC curve slope will be higher than margin slope of the marginal revenue curve at the equilibrium. So this is the sufficient condition. The first condition is called necessary condition. And this is called, this is called sufficient condition. Mute yourself. So now, if you look at this diagram, hello. Yes, sir. Unmute, mute, call.
So if this is your short run marginal cost curve and this is your MR curve, this PP line is your MR curve. So this is your SMC curve or short run marginal cost curve. Short run marginal cost curve will look like this. First, it will start to fall and then it will go up like this. So you can see that the SMC curve intersects the price line or MR line at two points, point A and point B. So both points could be uh, the first order condition or the necessary condition is satisfied at both point A and point B because this MR is equal to MC is satisfying at point A as well as point B. So farm can produce at Q0 or at QE amount of output, but even if the necessary condition is satisfied, the sufficient condition, which requires that the slope of MC curve must be higher than the slope of MR curve is not satisfied at point A, but it is satisfied at point B. Because at point A, you can see that the slope of SMC curve is negative because this certain marginal cost curve is falling. Okay, whereas the slope of MR curve is zero. And at point B, SMC is positive. That means SMC is increasing at point B. So its slope is greater than zero, whereas slope of the marginal revenue is equal to zero. So the second order condition slope of MC is higher than slope of MC curve is satisfied uh, at point B. Slope of MC is higher than slope of MR. So the equilibrium of the farm will be QE amount of output. So the farm will produce QE amount of output at equilibrium and that will give the farm maximum amount of profit. Clear? Yes, sir. So what I'm saying that if you draw so this is your price equal to average revenue MR and equal to average revenue and if this is your MC curve short run marginal cost curve so the first order condition is satisfied at both point A and point B because at both these points, point A and point B, marginal cost is equal to uh, marginal revenue. So both points are satisfying this first order condition, but the second order condition, which requires that the slope of MC will be higher than slope of MR curve. Now at this point only, M is increasing. That means slope of MC is greater than zero and slope of MR is equal to zero because MR curve is horizontal to a straight line. So slope of MC is greater than slope of MR. The second order condition is also satisfied at point B but it is not satisfied at point A because here slope of MC as MC is falling here in this range. So slope of MC is negative. That means slope of the marginal cost curve is less than slope of MR curve. So at equilibrium, the firm will produce QE amount of output and that will be sold at the market price P. Fine. Hello. Okay, sir. Now, in short term equilibrium, a farm can either make loss or it can make profit. That, that means it can earn super normal profit or it can make normal profit in a short run equilibrium. That will depend on the position of short run average total cost or short run average cost curve. Uh, SSE curve. SSE means 
शॉर्ट रन एवरेज कॉस्ट कर्व और शॉर्ट रन एवरेज टोटल कॉस्ट कर्व नाउ हियर इफ यू लुक एट दिस डायग्राम फर्स्ट यू ड्रॉ दिस एस एम सी कर्व ओके एंड ऑलवेज रिमेम्बर दैट शॉर्ट रन एवरेज कॉस्ट कर्व विल इंटरसेक्ट द एस एम सी कर्व एट द मिनिमम पॉइंट ऑफ एस एस सी कर्व दैट मीन्स एस एम सी कर्व मस्ट पास थ्रू द मिनिमम पॉइंट ऑफ एस एस सी कर्व ओके now here in this diagram this is first you draw this smc curve and the mr curve so you get the equilibrium at point e0 here in the at this point so at e0 is this e0 point will be the equilibrium so you can see that at equilibrium firm will produce this qe amount of output now corresponding to this output if you look at the average cost so to produce qe amount of output the average cost per unit or per unit cost is this distance so this distance is your average cost and average revenue is this distance qe e0 this distance so each firm is incurring this amount of loss the firm is incurring this amount of loss uh, per unit so the total loss the firm incurs is the shaded area this area bujha gaya lo yes sir बाकी जब बुझते हो रहे थे ना सर अब से दिस इज योर प्राइस इक्वल टू एयर इक्वल टू एमआर कर now then you have to draw the short run marginal cost curve so from this you get the equilibrium e so at this equilibrium the firm is producing this qe amount of output this much is fine yes sir now what i am saying that depending on the nature of or position of short run average that uh, whether the firm will make a loss or make a profit that will depend on the position of the average short run average cost curve sac curve or this is also called short run average total cost curve average total okay and you can see that the smc curve passes through or intersects ssc curve at ssc's minimum point now to produce at q e amount of output what is the average cost or per unit cost if you increase it like this so this distance or uh, call it d q e d q e this distance q e this distance is average cost or cost per unit 
and what is your revenue revenue is average revenue is this distance e q e this is your average revenue or per unit revenue so to produce q e amount of output per unit farm gets this much average revenue e q e this distance is average revenue and this is your average cost that means the firm is incurring this amount of loss per unit so the total loss the firm will make is the area of this rectangle this shaded rectangle is the total loss bojha yes, gachhe yes sir ebar bojha now ekhi bhabe jodi एवरेज कॉस्ट फंक्शन टा शॉर्ट टर्म एवरेज कॉस्ट फंक्शन टा जो भी इरकम हो इफ दिस इज़ द एवरेज कॉस्ट फंक्शन तो अलेफ़ फार्मर लॉस को तो हो भी वा प्रॉफिट को तो हो भी इकहने इक्विलिब्रियम टा एक ही हर जगह आच्छी पॉइंट ई थे ताहले दिस इज़ द अमाउंट ऑफ़ पर यूनिट रेवेन्यू एवरेज रेवेन्यू सिमिलरली एस दिस इज़ द पॉइंट ऑन द शॉर्ट टर्म एवरेज कॉस्ट कर्व आल्सो सो दिस इज़ आल्सो इक्वल टू एवरेज कॉस्ट सो एवरेज कॉस्ट विल बी इक्वल टू एवरेज रेवेन्यू दैट मींस फॉर इच यूनिट ऑफ़ आउटपुट द फार्म इज़ नॉट मेकिंग � normal profit bojha lo ha yes sir similarly if the position of ssc curve is somewhere here like this then still now your equilibrium is that at point e and farm is producing qe amount of output now to produce qe amount of output average revenue is this distance e qe what you are getting from the mr curve this distance and what is your average cost per or per unit cost per unit cost is this distance say this is f qe this distance is per unit cost so per unit for every unit the farm is getting this much profit per unit this is the profit per unit so the total profit farm gets is this amount area of this rectangle okay so this will be profit so farm is as profit is positive we can say that farm is making a super normal profit bojha gelo so a farm in a short run equilibrium can make either loss or it can earn super normal profit or it can earn just the normal profit Clear? Yes, sir. Now uh, I'll take uh, five more minutes, and then I'll finish. So one is uh, one point is called. Uh, next point is break-even point. So break-even point is. Uh, let's look at the diagram. Look at this diagram. Just we draw have drawn this SMC card first. Now we have drawn the SSC curve, and this is short-run average cost curve, and this is the short-run average variable cost curve. Okay. This average cost curves are always U-shaped curve, and what is the difference between the SSC curve and short-run average variable cost curve? Is nothing but average fixed cost curve. So. this 
vertical distances between SAC curve and ABC curve is average fixed cost curve. Let's copy this and paste it here. So we know that the total cost oh yeah. So what we know that total cost is equal to total fixed cost plus total variable cost. Total fixed cost means the cost of machinery, land, etc. Say whenever, if, even if you stop production, then you have to continue to bear this total fixed cost because you cannot, uh, all of a sudden cannot uh, sell your machineries, etc. And this is your total variable cost means if you change your output or this part of the cost to variable cost part is the, uh, if you, it varies whenever you change your output. So if you divide all but by output, so what is get average cost will be equal to average total cost plus average variable cost. So you can write from this average cost minus average variable cost will be equal to average total cost. So this function, this curve is nothing but your average total cost curve. And this curve is nothing but your average variable cost curve. So the difference between these two, that means this vertical distance is nothing but your this is your average fixed cost. This is average fixed cost. And how the average fixed cost will look like? Say average fixed cost is uh, say 50 rupees. Okay. Now as your output increases or Q increases, so average fixed cost is equal to 50 by Q. So as output increases, this 50 by Q term will keep on falling. So average fixed cost curve will look like a downward sloping or this is this will be a rectangular hyperbola like this. So that means as you increase your output, the distance, this vertical distance will keep on falling or average fixed cost will keep on falling. That is why if you look at the difference here at this point, this vertical distance or gap between the, these two cost functions is much higher than this distance. So as you increase your output, your the gap between the two average SAC curve and ASAVC curve will keep on falling. Bojarechi? Yes, sir. Okay, uh, now say take price P0. At price P0, the equilibrium point will be at point C here. So at point C, what is happening? Price is equal to your average cost curve. Uh, average cost. That means uh, whatever uh, amount, uh, cost you have incurred, your total revenue will be same as total cost. That means 
uh, the firm will get only the normal profit. So if the market price is P2, so equilibrium will be at point C, which is at the minimum point of short run average total cost curve. So firm will produce Q2 amount of output and point C is we'll call the break even point and P2 price is called the break even price. That means the price corresponding to that which the firm will get only the normal profit. Fine. Yes. Sir, yes, sir. At price P2, the firm can cover its average total cost because at price P2, average revenue equals average cost. Jotutama cost portion, if average revenue equal to average cost, then we can say that the total revenue is equal to the total cost. If we multiply both side by uh, output. So at this price, the firm earns normal profit only. So we call this price P2 is break even price and point C as break even point. Next is called shutdown point. What is shutdown point here? Now at this price, if the price is P0, then the firm is at point A, the equilibrium point is at A, where the firm will produce Q0 amount of output. And uh, so that the firm can cover its average variable cost only. So firm's total cost, so if you look at this P0 price, the firm's total cost will be how much? We will get this from the S AC curve. So this will be the firm's total cost per unit. So this vertical distance. Now, if the price is P0, at P0 price, firm can cover the total revenue will be equal to area of this rectangle, P0, Q0, P0, Q0, which will be equal to this. This is the average variable cost multiplied by amount of output. So this will be equal to total variable cost. So total revenue is equal to total variable cost only, but the firm's total cost is how much? Total variable cost plus total fixed cost, which is greater than tier because tier here is equal to total variable cost. That means firm has to bear this total fixed cost also. It make a loss which is equal to total fixed cost. So if, so at price P0, firm can cover its average variable cost only because at price P0, average revenue is equal to average variable cost or price equal to ABC. So at this price, firm in, is incurring a loss because the average revenue is less than average cost or average revenue, average cost is equal to ABC plus average fixed cost, which is greater than ABC, which is equal to price at P0 price at this price. But if the firm stops production, it will incur a loss which is equal to its fixed cost. So as long as firm can cover its variable cost, it will continue its production. So if price is less than minimum variable cost, that is less than P0, if price is less than P0, then the loss will be higher than the fixed cost. So in this case, firm will stop producing or firm will shut down its operation. 
So we call the minimum point of average variable cost curve at point A as shutdown point and the corresponding price P0 as shutdown price. Now at point A, if the farm shut down or does not produce anything, then it has to bear the fixed cost. So the its profit will be minus TFC or which is a loss. Now at point A corresponding to price P0, if the farm continue to produce, its profit will be total revenue minus total variable cost minus total fixed cost, which will be equal to minus TFC because at price P0, total revenue is equal to TVC, total variable cost. That means the profit uh, is same in both the cases, whether you produce at point A or if you or whether you do not produce at point A. In both here and here, the loss is the same. So farm is indifferent between producing and not producing. So if the farm will continue to produce, if the profit from producing is greater than equal to profit from not producing. So what is profit from producing is nothing but this. Total revenue minus total variable cost minus total fixed cost. And if this is greater than the profit from not producing, which is equal to minus TFC, total fixed cost. So from this, if you can deduct this minus TFC minus TFC term both sides, uh, if PR is greater than total variable cost, and if you divide it by Q both sides, it will be if price is greater than zero average variable cost, the farm will continue to produce. So as long as price is greater than or equal to P0, a farm will continue to produce. And if due to some reason price comes down or comes below P0, farm will stop producing. So from this curve, we can draw the supply curve of the farm. So if for any price below P0 price, the output of the farm will be zero. And at price P0, farm will produce at point A, producing Q0 amount of output. So we get this point A here, point A here, and uh, corresponding to the price P0 and output Q0. Similarly, if the price, the market price is P1, so the farm will then produce at point B and producing output Q1. So if we plot it here, so you get point B here at price P1, the farm will produce Q1 output. Similarly, if you take different prices like P2, P3, etc., farm will produce C at C at, at D, etc., producing Q2 or Q3 amount of output. Now, if you join points A, B, C, D, etc., so what we'll get, you will get short run supply curve of a farm of one particular farm. So similarly, so it, it is basically a short run supply curve of a farm is basically a farm's marginal cost curve in short run uh, for which price is greater than or equal to minimum of ABC. So farm supply curve is upward sloping portion of MC curve above the shutdown point or minimum of ABC. Now, from this supply curve of different farms, if you just do this horizontal summation, we can get the market supply curve of this commodity, as we have seen in the previous unit. So if, say, this is supply curve of one particular farm, farm A, and this is a supply curve of farm B, then we can draw, take any price P0 here. So at this price, this is the amount of output Q0, amount of output by farm one. And at the same price, this is the output of farm Q0 of farm B, farm two. 
So at this same price, if you add this Q02 plus Q01, so at this same price P0, you can say this is the Q0, which is equal to Q01 plus Q02. Similarly, you take any another price P1. So at this price, term one produces this much, Q11, and at the same price, farm 2 is producing this much, Q21. So at this P1 price, both firm combining both firm. So if you join these two points, you get the market supply curve of the commodity. Okay. Okay. okay, sir. So I'll stop here. Yes, sir.